something that you're not com if you're not comfortable being recorded you are free to hang up now and we will send a recording of today's webinar to you um otherwise we're just going to go ahead and get started um a couple housekeeping things please feel free to ask questions today via the chat feature on your zoom window uh, we've got several staff that are monitoring the chat, and we are all here to you know, make sure that you have your questions answered as we go along. We also have closed captioning available for you should you need it, need it, and that is an icon that is available on the lower bar of your Zoom screen. Um, and so you just click on that, and it will take care of it. And if there is anything that comes up, something with technology that's not working well for you today, please feel free to go into the chat and uh, from the drop down menu, find Kim Ross. She's one of our great staff here at the American Heart Association. And you can chat her directly and she'll try to sort out the technology issue for you. And with that, I hope we're all ready to go. Let's just dive into today. Next slide, Kim. So let's just very briefly go over what we're hoping to accomplish today. Um, we want you to have a better understanding about You're the Cure and what we do as an advocacy network. We want you to get to know your grassroots manager. So we're going to take a little time to make sure you know who that person is because they are the person for you to connect with and are going to help you have a successful advocacy experience. Uh, we're going to give you some information about our top policy issues. It is not going to be all the things that we may work on at the Heart Association, but it is going to give you a preview of the many different public policies that we work on. And then we're going to help you have a better understanding about ways for you to take action and make an impact. Next slide. So let's start with what our mission is at the American Heart Association and how you can uh, really make a difference for our mission. Um, our mission statement is to be a relentless force for a world of longer, healthier lives. And um, for all of you out there that are listening, truly with um, You're the Cure, we believe ourselves to be that relentless force. If you have worked with us on campaigns, you know, we do not give up easily. We fight for what's best and going to make a health impact. And so we are happy to have you with us on our mission journey. Next slide. And in addition to having our mission, the American Heart Association is a very goal-driven organization. Uh, we are always looking to advance uh, the research and everything that we need to live longer, healthier lives. And in that fold, we also set impact goals. And so our current impact goal, which lasts through 2024, and then there'll be a new one coming, uh, is that every person deserves the opportunity for a full, healthy life. As champions for health equity, by 2024, the American Heart Association will advance cardiovascular health for all, including identifying and removing barriers to health care access and quality. And you're going to see as we talk about the issues today uh, and ways for you to make an impact that it does drive forward this impact goal and, of course, our mission. Next slide. And so to get us started and get us in the right frame of mind, I want to introduce you to one of our best advocates, Miss Sophie. She is in Arkansas and she has been doing all kinds of work with us uh, over you know, the last several years uh, and was recently with us in Washington, DC. And I don't think anybody can say it any better than she can about how important being an advocate is. So I'm gonna kind of turn the reins over to Sophie to really let you uh, know what it's like from her perspective to be part of You're the Cure. Sophie? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. And this is something, like Betsy said, that I can talk about for ages. And so I'm excited to do that with you today. I am from Arkansas. Right now, I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. And this is my home state. I'm 24 years old. 
and I am actually a pediatric nurse at the number one hospital in our state, Arkansas Children's Hospital. And so my, my advocacy journey actually started a long time ago, whenever I was five years old. And it was after we learned all about um, smoking cessation at school. And so I went to my grandparents' house who were habitual smokers. And I told them, and I was a little sassy girl, and I told them that I didn't want to come to Nana and Papa's house anymore because not only was their smoking habits hurting me, but it was hurting them as well. And so fast forward a couple of years after they stopped smoking, my grandfather actually had a heart attack and thankfully he survived, which is not, not often the case. And so we're very blessed in that aspect, but he survived and the doctors credited, credited it to the fact that he stopped smoking a couple of years earlier, that he is still with us today. And so I have had a passion for heart health from a very early age, and I'm very excited to say that I have been advocating with the American Heart Association officially for about eight years now, and it's been an absolute honor to do so. Um, and my grassroots manager here in Arkansas, Allison, and I have an amazing connection and relationship, and she has put me in such amazing spots to advocate for heart health. And so some examples of that, as you can see on the screen, um, I've actually been to Washington, D.C. twice within the last year. Uh, February, I was invited to the White House um, to advocate for heart health. And then I was invited back later in May for um, the Farm Bill fly-in to advocate for that Farm Bill. And so I've actually um, been able to advocate on a national level, but also within our state. So I have advocated um, at our state lobby day, which is something that I would encourage all of you to do as a first step and getting, getting um, or just taking action within the American Heart Association within your state. And so it is, it's something that I will always, always be a part of um, advocating for the American Heart Association. It's something that I'm proud to do. Thank you so much, Sophie. Like I said, nobody could say it better. Um, and thank you for everything you've done. We are so proud to have you with us. So thank if everybody's you. ready, Let's just dive in, and I'm going to bring up my colleague, Julie, uh, to talk with you today about uh, some more details of You're the Cure and what we do. Julie? Thanks, Betsy, and thanks, Sophie, for sharing your personal story with us today. Kim, next slide, please. So I'd like to start off first, basic, the basics is what is You're the Cure? So every day, the lives of people in the United States are touched by heart disease and stroke. Whether it's our health, the health of our friends, family, coworkers, a lot is at stake when we are fighting against our nation's number one in five killers. Yet we all have the power to make a difference by speaking out for policies that help build longer, healthier lives and healthier communities. And for more than 40 years, You're the Care Advocates have been doing just that. We are a community of parents, neighbors and friends, researchers and caregivers, patients and survivors, all passionate about a world free of cardiovascular disease and stroke. And every day we work together to advocate for healthier communities through legislative and regulatory policies at the local, state, and national levels. And I know that sounds like a lot, but we're going to get into it. Next slide, please. And so I want to start off and walk you through our You're the Cure website. It has a lot of great resources for you to learn how to communicate, to be able to communicate with your lawmakers but also to learn about the issues that are important to you, to find out about advocates that are in your state, and also a great way to stay up to date on our current policy work. Next slide. So the first thing I would like to highlight from the website is the resources for advocates. To help you grow as an advocate, we have compiled a number of resources as part of a grassroots advocate toolkit. To access these resources, you will click key issues at the top of the screen and select more resources in the drop down menu. There you will find videos and documents to help you learn more about our key issues and develop grassroots skills. Sorry, that like writing a letter to the editor, as well as resources to invite your family and friends to join your The Cure. Next slide. We also have updated our advocacy guide with the latest tips to advocate beyond your The Cure Alert. You can find the Advocacy Guide on our home page, and this will be your one-stop shop to learn about your The Cure and being an active, effective advocate. It will help you better understand advocacy, provide tips on writing, calling, and meeting with your lawmakers. 
explain why building relationships with your lawmakers is important, and so much more. You truly can influence decision makers and help create change within your community. And this advocacy guide is a fantastic resource. Next slide. Advocate stories. Okay, y'all, this is one of my favorite parts of my whole job. And Sophie, I know you and I've tried it in the past, and we have similar stories about our grandfathers and how our grandfathers' experiences have impacted us and brought us to work and volunteer with the American Heart Association. And so stories are one of the most powerful advocacy tools we have. And when you share your personal experiences, everyone, including lawmakers, better understand issues. And as you may know, our advocacy work is evidence-based, and we have found time and time again that an advocate's story can bring an issue to life and highlight the importance of an issue in relation to that lawmaker's district, because lawmakers like to hear from their constituents and hear how policy can change the lives within their district. And so those local stories go a long way. But not only that, our stories can also go beyond influencing lawmakers. Our stories can also encourage our family and friends to join us in this important advocacy work. Next slide. Now you can locate stories from your state or by issue, use the drop down menu. So you can go ahead and find stories by state or by issues such as access to care, cardiovascular disease prevention, so on and so forth. Next slide. All right, and so we really would encourage everyone today to share their stories with us. And I would love to know if you'll put in the chat box, yes or no, have you shared your story with us yet? It's really not that scary. All right. All right. Oh, look, Jacob, I love you. Okay. Anyone else? Have y'all shared your story before? Yes or no? Okay. No. A lot of no's. All right. So to share your story with us, it is super easy. There is a share your box um, available on our website and you can fill the form out. Also in a moment um, in today's conversation, we will be informing of you who your grassroots manager is, and you're always welcome to email your grassroots manager directly and share your story with them. And then if we will post your story to the website, we will speak with you first. We'll ask you for a photo and ask for any clarifying details before your story is shared to the site. Next slide. And then we have a blog. So our grassroots team keeps advocates up to date on what is happening on our policy work at the local, state, and federal levels through our blog that you can find on the website called The Pulse. And we also use some of the blog posts to, to generate content for our monthly newsletter to advocates. Now, the newsletter is only sent to you the cure advocates who opt into it. And to opt into it, it's super easy. You'll visit yourthecure.org backslash newsletter underscore subscription. And I will toss that in the chat box. Give me one moment. Okay. Oh, hold one second. That did not go to where I needed it to go. There you go. And so that'll be a great way to stay informed of what's happening in your state. Next slide. And just like with the stories, you can choose to read blog posts relating to your state or to an issue that is important to you. Next slide. And of course, we encourage you to visit the Action Center. So and it's at the top of the bar as well. And what that is, is you'll be able to find current Near the Cure alerts asking you to contact your lawmakers, either email or phone, um, in support of some of these timely issues we are working on. And so I know some of the care advocates have shared with me in the past that sometimes they miss that email or that text that we send saying, hey, we need your help. And so they'll take a few minutes every now, like every week or every other week to visit the Action Center and see how their voice can make a difference. So I would encourage you to do the same. Next slide. The last resource that I wanna point out to you that is available on our website, since it is election season, is our election resources site. You can access it at the top of our homepage, and there you can enter your home contact information, and you'll be able to check your voter registration status, polling location, election dates, and more. 
And I would like to note that the American Heart Association does not endorse or oppose any political candidate or party, and we will take no position on the outcome of candidate elections. So Betsy, with that, I would love to turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Julie and Kim, if we can continue on. And I think we are now handing off to Katie that's coming on next to talk about the issues. Actually, Betsy, I am going to be covering the issues today. Okay, great. So well, thank you. No problem. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, first, we're just going to show this slide here. Um, if uh, It will let you know if you can locate your state, who your grassroots contact is, who your grassroots manager is. Um, again, we will be sending out a recording, so if you aren't seeing your state really quickly before we move on, don't worry. Um, you know, you'll have a chance to look at this. Some of us have also said in the chat what states we cover, so you can look in the chat as well for your contact person. Next All slide. right, we can just go to the next slide, I think. And if you're more of a visual person, you can also look here. This is a map of our um, way we have broken our regions up across the country. So if you, you know, are out west, you'll see the states in blue. Um, and again, you'll see my name, Grace. I'm the region lead for our region. And then my counterpart in the west is Cami Sutton Hieronymus. But again, you can look through here. You'll see, you know, where your region is. Are you the Midwest? Are you the Western states? the Eastern states. Um, again, this is just a nice way to visualize what states are in your region and find out who your grassroots manager is. All right, next slide, please. All right, so we're gonna dive into our issues. Um, today, we just wanna start with saying our issues, our policies our, and recommendations are based on very rigorous research and science and best practices in cardiovascular disease and stroke prevention and treatment. And to that end, we have a wide variety of issues that we work on because we have found that they um, help determine the health and well being of all people. And we're going to go dive into these uh, issues a little bit in the next few slides. So we wanted to start with our top issue areas. Um, the first one, as you'll see, is tobacco-free. Many things fall into that, but the top three are clean indoor air, which means does your state have a comprehensive indoor air policy around tobacco? Um, some states do. Some of you on this call might be surprised because your state has had one for a lot of years, but there are a number of states that still do not have that. So we are continuing to work on that. We also have uh, increasing tobacco taxes on our issue list. And we work on this because the science has shown and the research has shown that by increasing the tax, it is often a way to deter young people from picking up the habit. Um, they are the most price sensitive group when it comes to this. Also, it is often a way to fund prevention and cessation programs in a state. And then the final item listed there is ending the sale of all flavored tobacco. Um, again, this is an issue we are working on in a number of markets um, and a number of states, both locally and, federal, and statewide. And we are doing this because flavored tobacco, as you'll see there, 80% of teens report that the first product they use is something that's flavored. And we're especially seeing this um, in e-cigarettes and other uh, newer products that it is really the flavors that kids say hooks them. And then once they're addicted to the nicotine, it's really hard to quit, even once they realize that maybe it's not the best thing to be doing. Um, so when we work on that, especially with flavored tobacco, we want all flavors and all products because we have realized through research and through time that if anything flavored is left on the market, eventually uh, those who are already addicted might switch to that. They will, or kids will, um, still be targeted by the industry because the indus tobacco industry is constantly evolving and inventing new products. So we really need to be comprehensive so they can't just invent a new product. And it also must always include menthol. If you didn't know that, um, menthol is the one flavored cigarette. Um, it's a flavor that was not um, taken off the market in traditional tobacco products when they took flavors off for other traditional products. Next slide, please. 
All right, and our next slide is, I'm sorry, I'm working with slides with notes and then also seeing what's on the screen. Our next one is these top issues of chain of survival, equality systems of care and access to care. So cardiac emergency response plans, this is a newer issue for us. This is something that we are working on in a number of states or anticipate working on. It is the idea of, do, is there a plan if something happens? So if you know a student goes down at school or at a sporting event, you know, is there a plan in place so that, you know, the best um, action is taken to hopefully ensure that the student gets the help they need or any person who's there gets the help they need um, to ensure their survival. The next one listed there is CPR in schools. And this is an issue we've worked on for a number of years, but the idea is um, ensuring that students, usually in high school, are exposed to CPR training before they graduate. So that way we are continually um, having new people uh, trained in it and how to perform CPR. So that way we're continually having new people on our communities who feel comfortable if an emergency were to arise. And then telecommunicator CPR. This was one that I found interesting years ago when we added it. Um, and this was, you may not realize that if someone works as an emergency dispatcher, they may not be required to know how to walk you through doing CPR. Uh, I know I always assumed that was just part of the training that they received when they were onboarded in their job, but that is not the case. And so we are working where it's possible to ensure that when people are hired as some kind of emergency dispatcher, they're also trained on how to walk you through the CPR. And so that way, when someone calls 911, you know, and they're in a panic, um, somebody on the other line can help walk them through how to do CPR until emergency help can get there. And then you'll see quality systems of care listed. Um, this is a system of care that is with our hospitals. And this is about ensuring that when people do have a heart attack or a heart issue or a stroke, that they get to the hospital that is best equipped to help them and to have the best response possible. Oftentimes, uh, the closest hospital doesn't necessarily have the ability to administer clot busting drugs, for example, if someone's having a stroke. And that time is absolutely crucial. So we want to make sure even if the, the right hospital is five more miles down the road, it's better to get them there first than to get them to the closest hospital and then have them later be transferred because those precious minutes really can make a difference in recovery. And then with access to care, um, you'll see they're listed. There's Medicaid expansion easy enrollment and maternal health issues. So for many people in the US, quality and affordable health care can be out of reach. We at the American Heart Association believe that everyone should have access to quality and affordable care, no matter where you live or how much money you have. And we believe that you, people deserve to have quality health care. So some of these policies uh, include, you know, Medicaid expansion and the handful of states that still have not. Um, and also the easy enrollment, which means it makes it easier to enroll in these types of programs. And then with maternal health, the primary thing we're focusing on there is expanding or extending a Medicaid for maternal Medicaid coverage for 12 months. That is an issue we've had a lot of luck in, thankfully. A lot of lawmakers have been receptive to that, but we do still have a handful of states that have not passed that legislation. I believe it's Arkansas, Iowa, and Idaho, and I believe Wisconsin is working on it right now. So if you live in one of those states, just know that that is something that we're still working on there. And if it interests you, let us know. We'd love to have your help. And then we have one more slide that has a few more top issues. And those are um, healthy eating, active living, health equity, and local control. So I will try and go through these fairly quickly, although there are a lot to cover here. As you'll see bulleted, healthy food access, school nutrition, and sugary drinks fall under the healthy eating. Um, a healthy diet, as many of us know, um, positively impacts our heart health. But for many people, a fast-paced lives, unfortunate inequities across our country can mean that eating healthy is very difficult for a lot of people. So we are working on a, several policies to help change that and help um, increase access to healthy foods. This can include things like ensuring food assistance programs like SNAP, which sometimes people will call food stamps, are available to those who need them. We're also trying to help families um, understand that sugary drinks um, are not healthy and to curb the addiction and the drinking of that, you know, making it easier to make the healthy uh, choice, um, both 
in situations like that, but also in you know the foods that are offered at restaurants, things like that. We are also working on some water health issues um, because again, you know, at the end of the day, uh, sugary drinks, if it's a treat, that's fine, but you know, water is always a better choice. Um, then under active living, we have complete streets and physical education. Um, active living, you know, making sure people can fit in that daily activity into their life um, is essential to a healthy lifestyle. You know, complete streets is the idea that, you know, there is infrastructure that makes people feel comfortable biking and walking, that it feels safe and accessible. Um, you know, if a community is able to be out and be active, they're not only healthier, but everybody gets to enjoy that. Kids walking to school, people who'd prefer to walk to get, an, a, you know, an errand nearby done. And it's obviously once the infrastructure is done, everyone in the community can enjoy that. Uh, physical education is around the physical education offered in schools and ensuring that kids do get it. Um, PE is different than when we were kids, for many of us at least. And it's important that kids get access to that physical education. Then we also have health equity, uh, early care and education like Head Start, and then paid family and medical leave are the two issues that fall under this category. Um, as we've mentioned, there's a lot of different things we focus on. There are real and systemic policies that have been in place for a long time that can affect someone's access to resources that impacts their ability to have a heart healthy life. So we believe in you know accessing all of these things. Um, and then we also have uh, local control and preemption. This one is a trickier topic. It's a little hard to understand sometimes, but the idea is we believe that local communities know best and often know better what works for them and what their communities need. Sometimes state legislators will disagree with that and they want things to be made at the state level. And so what they will do is there will be legislation passed that preempts or takes away that local control and says for certain issues, only state legislators can make those decisions that a city or a county cannot make a decision for themselves on certain things. We've especially seen this in our tobacco control work where they will try and say, well, you know, if we're going to, you know, have smoke free air or we're going to have a restriction on flavored tobacco, we want it to be statewide. We don't want communities making that decision for themselves. And again, you know, we often feel like those communities you know, know and they see what they need. And if they want to make that decision for their community, we feel like that should be, they should be allowed to. And I think I've covered a lot of stuff here today, but mostly I just wanna say is, you know, with all these issues, we obviously can't work on all of them in all places at once. So if you're curious about what specifically is being worked on, if there's one of these issues that really speaks to you and you're passionate about, please reach out to your grassroots person They'll let you know what's on the agenda for the next year or two in your state, um, if there's local work, if there's, you know, state stuff going on on those topics. And if you have questions about what's been worked on in the past or why something's not being worked on, we can often help answer those questions. I think that might be the end of mine, but can we go to the next slide and I'll just double check? Yes, I think I'm turning this over now. Thank you so much, Grace. And Katie, now I believe it is your turn to tell everyone about how they can use their voice to make an impact. Katie? Yep, it is. Thanks, Betsy. Hi, everyone. I am Katie Aquilina. I am the uh, grassroots uh, team in Eastern Region. Um, and so you can see in the back, I'm uh, mostly I work with all the Eastern Region, but I'm also mostly working out in New York and South. Um, so it's really nice to meet all of you and um, kind of talk about how you take your voice and um, can really use it to make it back to those policies you just heard about. I'm coming in muffled. Interesting. I don't know why. Katie, maybe try not using video and boosting your bandwidth. Yeah, let me try that. Okay, the... Uh... That is better. Is anything else better yet? You sound a lot better, Katie. Okay. All right. We'll just go with the video off then. Right. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so we are going to be talking about how you can use your voice um, to be able to make impact in those uh, issues that Grace was talking about. So next slide, please. 
so um you know we really it's about you know when advocates are needed and they're always really needed in a campaign but there are times here and there where things um you know are kind of come up in different ways those of you who remember schoolhouse rock uh i'm just a bill things like that generally in the state or local level works about the same a little bit different per area um but essentially uh you know we really need you through all uh ways of when a campaign is happening so early on in the campaign we want to make sure that you're educated on the issues that you care about make sure that you have all of the uh, information that you need, the talking points, why that's an issue that's important to us, and to be able to help, um, you know, really give you the tools so that you can tell your story the best. So, um, you know, people are really used, um, and your stories are used throughout the uh, throughout the campaign. So, before talking about why the issues are important, um, talking to uh, legislators about why those issues are important, the greater community why those issues are important. Um, and making sure that we can use our voice through that so that we can have a bill become a law. Next, please. So there are many different ways to take action. And, you know, this is really, you know, one of the things that's great about You're the Cure and about advocacy is you can really choose your own adventure. Um, you know, this, we understand not everybody is going to be somebody who likes to write. But not everybody likes to be somebody who is giving a presentation or making phone calls. So there's a lot of different ways that you're able to um, use your voice uh, to take action. So you can do emails to legislators, post social media posts, call legislators and tell them what you think. Um, a lot of times it ends up being um, a voicemail or something like that. So it's actually pretty easy. Um, come in and see them in person, have an in-person or virtual meeting or have a drop by visit with them. Uh, you know, write out a letter to the editor and post it in your local uh, paper. Those do still exist and people do still listen to them um, and read them, especially um, a lot of legislators and decision makers. Uh, have a media interview. So if there's something that, you know, you really want to talk to the media about, we can help you set that up. Um, have an advocacy training. That's something that we can do individually. We can also do that with groups. So if you have a church group, a youth group, somebody like that who's interested in having um, a training themselves so they can learn more about issues, they can learn more about how to take action themselves, can absolutely help out with that. Um, and then, of course, as we've been talking about sharing your story with decision makers and making sure that we are able to uh, use that story um, that you are able, really, to use that story um, to be able to push forward the issues that matter to you. And there's more. So if there's anything that you think of or you see or you're excited about, we're always happy to talk with you and work with you um, to make those happen. Next, please. So one of the ways that we, um, that you'll see us uh, working quite often and you'll often get emails um, from us is through our action alerts. So as we know, those of you who have been working in advocacy before um, with us or with others, uh, bills move very quickly through the legislative process. Many times uh, bills can um, really, you know, we can have them go through very fast, which is why it's important that we have those stories early, we're able to make those connections early so that we can be prepared for those things. Um, and then when that happens, when legislation is about to happen, there's something very important going on, we will have, um, we'll make sure that we have advocates uh, knowing about the status of bills and being able to help connect with legislators uh, through, a, um, through an action alert, which is what you'll see right here. Um, and then we'll contact you via email um, and help. And that way you can take action either by sending an email yourself or uh, connecting through a phone call that we can help connect you with on those. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for those. Um, make sure that uh, you're the cure and the Heart Association is not listed as spam in your email folders. This is especially important if you have a Gmail or a company account. Sometimes those do get caught up there. So Definitely keep an eye out if you're not seeing these. Um, see if there may be somewhere else in your mailbox. Next, please. Um, so 
let's work on this together. Um, we have a lot of different um, ways, like we said, to take action. And uh, we have one right here that we can start off with. Uh, as you've been hearing, um, Access to AEDs Act, uh, Access to AEDs is a important issue for us to make sure that people are able to, um, you know, have that chain of survival to them as quickly as possible. So we can make sure if there is any sort of a heart related illness or injury, we can really take care of that at school campuses at a federal level. Um, we want to make sure that we're authorizing a federal grant program so that there's training for CPR and AEDs for students, staff, and sports volunteers um, so that everybody is able to know exactly what they need to do should there be a medical emergency um, at a school or during a sports event. Um, we also want to make sure that uh, that funding is equitable so that all uh, communities, um, regardless of um, financial ability for the school will be able to have that support. Um, so this is really important for us. Um, and Georgetta has a story right there, which um, I am sorry to uh, hear about, but that's, you know, th those are the stories that are all the more important for our legislators to be able to hear and for us to be able to make a difference. Um, so this is, can be your first action. If this is your first time meeting with us, um, you can take action by texting AED to 46839. And what that will do, will send you a link that will help you uh, ask your member of Congress to support the Access and AEDs Act. Uh, so we can make this a federal law and we can get the funding um, that is so important and that we know um, we'll be able to help um, people live longer, healthier lives. Next, please. Yes, Lori, I, I'm sorry to hear from your loss too. Um, it's really important that people have AEDs um, and these are, this is why. And it's very important that we make sure that legislators really know these things um, and really hear about these uh, so that it's not numbers. You know, we have lobbyists, they get numbers, they get stats and statistics, but it's these personal stories that we have seen firsthand really make a difference to people. Um, so, um, you know, some steps to getting to low your lawmakers. Um, first of all, if you're gonna go meet with a lawmaker, just do your homework. Just a little Google, you know, you can kind of find out some things. See if you have something in common. Do you belong to um, similar organizations? Do you have your kids been concerned, um, you know, have something connected with each other? Um, do you both have dogs? There's any number of things um, that can really make quite a difference. So, you know, try to make those connections and that can be a lot easier. Um, you know, um, reach out to them and just make contact, introduce uh, yourself to them. Um, as I always say, advocate or legislators are just people with interesting jobs. Um, they're just like us and we voted them in or we didn't and, you know, however you wanted to do, but, you know, they are, they do work for us regardless. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with going out and reaching out and introducing yourself um, and feeling comfortable with that because you absolutely should. You have absolute right to talk with them about the issues that matter to you. Um, and then grow the relationship. If you want to connect with them on social media, sign up for their newsletters, go to local events for them. Uh, we've seen a lot of advocates who have grown from just having, you know, some initial conversations with legislators to really becoming people that the legislators themselves will call to get their perspective on issues that are important to them um, so that we are able to, um, you know, really influence what they have because they do care quite a bit about what we have to say. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, think that it's, just, you know, the high powered folks that get the room. And, you know, sometimes that does happen, but the more that the people are talking, the more that the people are reaching out to the advocates, uh, they are really going to um, really hear you and really rely on your um, your story and your thoughts and your input. Next. 
Um, and then for You're the Cure, um, you know, we really want to make sure that not only we have you involved, but if there's anybody that um, you uh, are friends or family with that you think would be wanting to get involved, people that you work with, coalition members, organization members um, with you, um, you know, definitely encourage them to sign up for You're the Cure. If you want us to come out and meet with anybody, um, if you want us to have a meeting with anybody, we're always able to do that. We're always able to help answer any questions um, about issues or tactics that may be effective. So um, definitely let us know. Um, we're able to do meetups. Um, you know, we also encourage you to work with um, social media and, and put out, you know, things that are important to you on social media. Because as we all know, that's where a lot of, um, a lot of it all happens. So uh, definitely, you know, speak out there and make sure that people know this can really make a difference. Um, and then how can they join? It's very easy. They just text CURE to 46839 and we help them get, um, you know, signed up. They get a link and they get signed up and um, they'll be on our next quarterly call and they'll be working with you on things. And um, it's really great. And I can say it's a lot of fun when you have friends and, and loved ones, um, you know, advocating with you and, you know, it's really a great thing to do together. So I definitely encourage that. Okay, so what's next? Um, you know, use the rep resources on our website to help you. Um, identify three people you know and ask them to join. That's a really great way to help out um, and really kind of grow the movement and grow the movement within, um, you know, your networks and the people you know that are important to you. Um, and then, of course, complete our survey and tell us how you want to advocate and what's important to you. I'm going to throw that back to Betsy. Thank you, Katie. And I know we are just a few minutes, probably right at time this afternoon. If you could go to the next slide, Kim. Just to wrap up, um, I think if you've had any questions, you've put them in the chat. But if you still have or you think of more questions, you should feel free to reach out to us. Um, I will ask my team that's on here to please put their email addresses into the chat right now so that you can contact any one of us, doesn't matter what state, uh, we'll get you connected to the person that you need to be connected with. I want to thank everyone that joined us today and thank uh, the grassroots team for their presentations this afternoon. I hope you have found this helpful. Um, some of you have very, very moving stories that are really important to making change happen. And we we want to be that connection point for you to help you uh, tell the people that need to hear about it. So please uh, stay tuned for more. Once again, we hope that you will take action. So don't forget, you can text AED to 46839 and take action on our federal legislation to increase access to AEDs. If you know someone who would like to join You're the Cure, it's really easy. They can do it on our website or they can just text HEART to 46839. And in follow-up, you'll get an email with a copy of this recording. Feel free to share that with others if you would like. Uh, there are resources on our website and we will include a survey for you to complete. And we ask you to do that because it'll make sure that future offerings that we provide really hit the mark and are something um, that you find meaningful and engaging. And with that, I will wrap us up for today. Thank you again. And we look forward to seeing you uh, in You're the Care. Take care.